If you've been doing Faye Meander, it's the tower mode for this game and it gets harder and harder as you go up. And then every 10 floors, you usually face somebody called the Lady of Greenery's Ravatrix. And everybody who's getting to her right now is getting absolutely wrecked, but she's really easy to beat. It's all about your placement and then putting resistance gear on or a resistance lead. If you're lucky enough to have one of the few epics that give you a resistance lead or maybe one of the legendaries, unfortunately, I haven't found any rares that can give you that yet. Also, you use resistance food and I'll show you where to find that, where to get the materials for it, how to make it. She's a really sweet looking boss that does a lot of poisons. This big cross section here is the main one we've got to look out for. It pulsates and puts poisons on. This is where the majority of poisons are going to happen from this move right here. But we can move our people around enough that only two will be affected by this. And those are the only two that we really have to focus on getting resistance right now. Later on, we're going to fight this lady many times going up in the tower mode. I think every 10 floors is what we did in beta. So we're going to need to start making really good teams with high resistance, decreased accuracy on the boss, but that's not going to work out well because she does dispel all debuffs on her. Because if you had decreased accuracy too, and then a little bit of resistance, then she's not going to be able to apply these debuffs, all those poisons. If you have high resistance, she won't be able to apply those poisons. If you have somebody like Tia that can do block debuffs on your whole entire team for 10 seconds with a 16 second cooldown, we can lower that cooldown. We can use artifacts to lower the cooldown. We can do it with skill haste later on with gear. And we could probably have 100% uptime. So there are heroes to make this much easier. This is her passive skill that's hitting the whole entire board every five seconds. This is why everybody is taking poison on the team. But the people that aren't in that little pulsating area, we don't have to worry about them that much. It's only a few stacks. We don't even need to remove them. You don't have to have in a to remove, which is a rare to remove debuffs to beat this. This move where she stuns someone. If you have high resistance on the person she's stunning like your main tank, then this will stop this from stunning anyone else. Since it's the very first time we're facing her, I didn't worry about you know the stun. The stun did hit my tank and then it went over to somebody else next to them. It's all right, it wasn't, it wasn't a big deal. Placement, we came in here and we tried a lot of different placement because that one move that she does, this one right here on the ground, you're gonna see it pulsate hits a big cross section. And if you group your heroes up, they're all gonna get many stacks of poison and die. We're talking like 10, 20 stacks of poison. So then eventually I put them in this. I mean, we tried a bunch of other ways to do it, but eventually I settled on this formation and only the two bottom ones were getting stacks of poison. Look, the two bottom ones are at six and seven right now. While my tank was at two and the other two up top, DPSers weren't weren't doing anything, just a few stacks of poison on them. Then I went back to look at our gear. What chest pieces do we have with resistance? You should have a lot of new gear, a lot of rare gear like this with resistance chest pieces. Even your older ones, your common gear, use those if that's the only thing you have resistance. Look at resistance substats. Now I did bring in in because I wasn't sure if we needed to remove those debuffs, but we didn't need to. You don't need her currently. Later on, you're gonna need a resistance lead I'm talking like way later in the stages. You're gonna need a resistance lead. We're gonna need her to remove the debuffs, I'm sure. It gets really hard. She gets really strong later on. We're talking maybe floor 15, 25, if, if she appears every 10 floors. And I think she does, just like she did in beta. So I made these two have high resistance and I put them down here where they're gonna get hit all the time. That way we could keep our DPS with DPS gear. We could have them with the attack chest piece, attack, uh, gloves, crit gloves, whatever you have on them. So we put our two DPS up top, no resistance on them. The tank, I didn't worry about resistance on him as well. I just did it on the two that are really gonna be inside that puddle. So if you know of a better way to set up your heroes, let me know. But this was making it so only two were affected by that puddle, which is great. I mean, it makes it very easy. So we only got those two with high resistance. Normally those two would be up to 10 stacks really quick. She does do this poison explosion as an ultimate move. That's why we got to get those stacks down. And then here we went and made some food. And I'm going to show you where we got the food from. I'm going to show you some vendors you can go to to get some good milk, some yak milk, some milk, some goat milk, and you can make that resistance cheese. It's the resistance cheese. And then in the Google document down below, I show you how to make all those different recipes 
and then where the vendors to go to get them. But the vendors have been changed. All you have to do is go to the main cities and go to the markets and you'll see that. And then there's one other place that's really good. Okay, let's pay attention to the bottom now. Resistance, resistance, resistance is popping up on my two healers. Nonstop. But look at the poisons on my other people. Like one poison, one poison, two poisons on my tank. We don't need Ina in here. She hasn't even used her ultimate yet. At this point, we don't need her. Later on, when this, when this thing gets much harder, we'll probably need her. I'm sure we will. There'll be way more stacks. But by the time she does her ultimate move, let's see if we even get hit by this ultimate. I think we're going to get, yeah, we're going to get hit by this ultimate. This is good. So with three stacks, that's not bad. That's not a lot of damage. And we healed it right back up. So we don't need to bring her in here. So if you don't have that rare, it's okay. There's a skeleton that can also move over all debuffs to him. If you load him up with high resistance, he'll move all these debuffs to himself and resist all of it. So you could use him if you have that one. But I wouldn't worry about it. I would just take two people, put them where I've placed these two, get your healer there because you want to keep your DPS with the DPS gear. And that's all you need to do. And if you're lucky enough to have a resistance lead, you really don't have to do anything but the resistance lead in food right now. The 25 resist food along with a resistance lead and you're just going to go through here with your normal team. It's going to be cake. But a lot of people when I was when I was on stream today, they were cursing the game out like legit. And I'm like, "Come on, man, it's not going to be that bad." Well, that's it, man. It's it's this easy. Now we'll do more videos once we get higher up and it gets crazy. Then we're going to have to really work on the gear, but we're going to have all the gear. We're going to have like resistance gear by then. We're going to have our runes that go underneath our gear. We've got two different runes. We're going to have ways to get high resistance, but make a kind of mental note of this. Anytime you see a good piece of gear that has really high resistance hits in it. Say you're rolling a gear piece and it just rolls three time into resistance. Keep that gear piece because this has 180 floors and we have to fight her many times on the way going up. If you go to any of my YouTube videos and you click on them and go down here to the comments, you can see that there's a tier list, codes and recipes. In this Google document, I have codes. So anytime I find out there's a new code, I put it in here immediately so you can check back. I don't think we're gonna have any new codes for a while. All these codes right here are pretty much expired. The only one that still works is Dragon Air JP. You can try that out. Everybody said it's still active today, but I'm pretty sure everything else is not active. And I don't know if they're going to come out with any new codes or not. So maybe we'll get rid of this section if they don't. We've got an artifact tier list. We've got rare tier list, tier list. We've got cooking recipes, which is what I use to find out what I need to make that potion or food by hitting resistance here. Resistance. And we can see resistance 10%. We can go down to resistance 20%, accuracy 20%. This is a really good one to make. And then we can go down to higher resistance of 25 made by cheesecake. And for that, we need two goat milk or two milk, two yak milk, two goat milk, three yak milk, three goat milk, which is better, right? If we only use three, then we can save some resources. So don't do this. Let's take this out, actually. I don't, it must be a different recipe, but you're using more resources for this. Then we can use, okay, so three total is the best thing to do. I'm going to remove that and I'm going to move these over. And then to the vendors, these vendor locations have moved. Normally I would do control F and then be able to search, you know, milk. If I want to find milk, I just type in milk and I can go down the list of all the people that have milk and see the location and go to it in the game. Well, just go to all the cities. Go to all the major cities and go to their market and look for milk. Also, next to the Grave of Curse, the brand new dungeon we just unlocked. Not Grave of Venom with a harpy, Grave of Curse. Teleport over to that dungeon and then take a right and go up that little narrow passage that leads you to the town. On the way up there, you're going to see a vendor that's going to run up to you and he has a boatload of yak milk. Yak milk is in a barrel. It doesn't actually look like milk. The other milk looks like milk, but yak milk is in like this wooden little, looks like a little barrel. So that's yak milk. And he's got tons of yak milk for you to buy. And every day you can go to these vendors and they'll be updated. So I need to start making a loop. I need to start going to these towns, going to the markets, buying up some milk, buying up some apples, because with apples and I think milk, we can make the recipe that gives us 20 accuracy and 20 resistance. 
Now we were trying to go for 25 resistance right now with the cheese, but there's a really good one that gives us 20 of both. That's pretty damn good right here. This yogurt and for the yogurt, we need two yak milk and two apples or two apples, yak milk and goat milk. And all those vendors have it. They have a lot of apple. Well, they usually have like four apples at all these vendors, a lot of goat milk, a lot of milk. And then yak milk is kind of limited to a few vendors. Let me know how you're doing with this boss. Are you enjoying the game so far? I appreciate your time, guys. Please subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you all in a video soon.